This video is about the PA 10-8 motor that came out of the 503J and what I'm focusing on right now or thinking about right now is cleaning this part of that uh, part of the housing there just to get that little bit of grime, grime there. This is uh, 320 grit uh, paper and I will sand that as well with uh, sandpaper but I'm just going to start Yes, it does look like it's dissipating, like it's going off. That's nice, because that's grimy down there. So now I'm kind of starting at the top of this stem and going down all the way. Before I was just down at the bottom there. Well, you know, it's just nice to work on clean stuff. But the rest of it is just, it needs a cleaning. That is extremely filthy. And there's a bearing in there under that. I've never taken it out. It's sealed in there, which is good because I'm going to put some oil down there. I'll flatten the swab and that will continue to be cleaned. And what I'm doing is to stop the spindle from the worm gear from turning is I've got my thumb stuck in there on one of the fan blades. Not a lot of pressure. Just enough to stop it from rotating so I can sand it. And it doesn't have to be forever, like this kind of stuff is really, like it has to be done and it takes a little bit of time, but not very much time. You know, I won't, I won't, I won't sand this for three or four minutes, maybe three minutes. Let me get the very end. So I'm going to really clean this well and get right in the grooves there with a thin piece of uh, sandpaper, like this. I'm going to cut a piece off and right down here, there's a set screw right down there. I'm not going to undo it, but that's how I'm going to, you know, keep track of, and there's only one. So I'm going to start cleaning this and slowly rotating it, and then once I get all the way around, I'll know that I have gotten all the way around. So I've got it folded like that, and then I'm going to fold it in half the other way, like that. And where I have those folds there, that'll fit down in the blade. It's really quiet, mundane work. You know, it'd be a good deal to, for me to kind of work my meditation into this. <laughs> and where did I do this? I did it on the gears for the hook. Yeah, I've done it for like meshed gears. I mean, it's so tacky to, to see dirt in the grooves when everything else is spotless. Like, and if you spend, you know, like a fair amount of, like, you know what it's like. Any restoration on these machines takes a long time. Now let me try this 800 on here. I had 320 on here before. Well, that's nice and smooth. Okay, let me get back to this again for a few more minutes. Just to get in those threads and, you know, whatever I couldn't get with the sanding. And plus there's residual from the sanding in there. Good, I can get in there. and Like, it was seized mechanically. There was so much dirt down there, it was totally frozen. So, I mean, this machine has really had... A bunch of work done on it. The, the hand wheel's been done. Uh, a lot of the up top has been at least cleaned or started cleaning. How, what kind of dirt am I getting off here? Yeah, I'm getting some smudge off. So right down there, it is really dirty. There's the brush tube. That copper brass shiny thing. Where's my flashlight? There's the tube with the... Uh, at this end will be the spring. And at that end will be the brush down on the commutator. And we can see how dirty that commutator is. Okay, I forgot to turn the camera on. Okay, now we're going to have some fun. So I've already got that cover off, so we'll get this one off at the other end. Now just slowly, keeping pressure on the top of that tube, slowly pull it there. See, and then the spring and the brusher there and they're in pretty good condition like they're pretty they're pretty clean you know so there it is there's the the commutator in there doesn't matter we'll get these screws off here and we'll get this taken apart and now we know there's a nut or a bolt inside at the other end of this screw that was hooking on to the screws that I already took out from the covers so I gotta make sure when I pull this stuff out you know, and then there's a spacer, there's a keeper spacer in there, and a plastic shroud, and you know, there's a couple of things in here. So when when I take it apart, I gotta have an eye and make sure that all the parts or whatever are 
coming out in an organized fashion. Now here, this is where I'm going to pull it apart. And we know that there's an insulator behind these pins. Well, it's actually, it's actually right down in there. And right? so that these do not electrocute that. So the motor stays safe. So I'll pull it apart slowly. And I'm looking for that spacer. Okay, so that's, there it is there. See, they're both in my left hand. There's the insulator that goes there behind those pins so it doesn't electrocute the aluminum housing. So I'll put, and that's like a fiber or whatever. We're not gonna oil that or wash that. No, no, no. And that's the, the little spacer that lines up the, the top. And then this is gonna have our, our nuts or our bolts that all the screws went into. And there's the wires. Okay, you know what, that's pretty clean. Oh, I'm telling you, look at it. I mean, this is so old, like the tape, but look how clean that copper wiring is, windings are. Wow, let's see what we got here. What we got here, that's our motor. But I got it out, and so I'm just gonna get my drill, and that's gonna help me get some good rotation on that. So I've got the drill hooked up, and I'm just gonna put the drill on gently and see if I can uh, get this to sand off some of the gunk on the commutator. Well, that's already, you know what, I'm just gonna hold it just like that. See, it has, well, there's some marks there. That's showing you how it, it is coming off. I guess I'm gonna have to keep rotating it a bit. So I'll go here next for five seconds or 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm just going back and forth to make sure that, you know what, that's pretty darn good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Now we're going to move forward and take a look at the rest of the motor stuff and see what else we have to do. Let me get a cloth and clean the commutator a little bit. I really like the look of the commutator. It may function. It may be fine. Anyway, I got to get this, I got to get to work. I'll get back. I think I missed you there, you guys. I'm taking the bottom bearing out. And there's a spring, and this part of the spring on the bottom bearing, it comes out of an opening on the left, and this one comes out of an opening on the right, down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my thumbs, and I've already checked the springs, the tension on the springs with my thumbs. I can push the springs in with my thumbs in there. And so now I'm going to push the tension in and pivot the springs out. And the way to do that is to place my thumbs correctly so that once I press down, I can, I can push with my thumbs. So that has to go that and that has to go left. Now that one's pushed down. So I may have to, what I end up doing is I just get one screw, screwdriver down to hold it down there or whatever pliers or whatever, and then push the other one out. So that's what I'm going to do. This should work. It did work. So it's come loose. And there you can see the one tab there, and I've got the spring on my pointer. Here is the, the bearing. I want to point out, this bearing has a slot here, and that's because when we put this back together, put some grease down in, in this bearing, down at the bottom, and that's what that slot is for, to allow the grease to lubricate and, and maneuver. So that's going to go into the clean, little clean pile as well. So that's empty now, and that's... You know what, it's pretty clean. This is one of the cleanest motors I've seen, and uh, so I'm really, really pleased about that. So, what do I want to do next? That is fine. I'm not going to mess with any of that. All those leads are good. I may take a thousand uh, sandpaper. You know what, I'm not going to do a whole lot to them. I'll take a little thousand paper, sandpaper, and give them a couple of twists. Those I'm going to be really gentle with. They're fragile. This is, but it's still, it's, I wonder if this was a newer housing or a part or a newer motor or whatever, because like I say, it's, it's pretty. That I don't need to do anything with. This I have to wash. And all of these I have to clean. The, the plastic stuff or bake light stuff will go in there. 
uh, this little keeper, it'll go back in the box because it's not going to be washed in the thing. And then that fiber one. So all this stuff right there is going to be washed. So I've got the two long screws, the two short screws that came off the little covers, the little black bake light covers. And then I've got the tubes, brass or whatever these tubes are for the, for the, the brushes and springs. And then there's the inside bolts or nuts. And uh, I know you guys know, but you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. That's how those work when, when everything is put together. This is pretty grimy. That, I'm not going to use any crud cutter or anything really tough on that. It's just, I'm just going to get it clean. Like maybe, a, like a little bit of oil and stuff, you know. And uh, no sandpaper, nothing too violent on it. And this is a, a formed piece. It's a bunch of, it's a, it's a lot of little pieces of metals or some kind of metal. And then somehow it's whatever pressed into this form so that all those little pieces become one. And so I don't put crud cutter on there. Uh, it's really weird. So just a little bit of oil and then when putting, you know, closing the motor up, some grease. And, and there's the bottom, the bottom spring that holds it all down, holds it all in place. So I've done a number of these motors, so it's kind of like old home week. <laughs> Hello friends. This PA10-8 motor is clean. It was clean to begin with, actually. It was really clean. I, I am speculating that the motor was uh, a replacement or a uh, somewhat recent, and we're talking years here, not weeks or months, but somewhat uh, recent uh, replacement because it really is spotless when I look at the you know you look inside and outside and I wiped this down with a shop towel before I started and there was virtually no you know dirt or marks that came off of the shop town this plastic I call this a plastic insert I'm not sure on some of these names so I, I've I, you know that is a spacer that is an insulator. I call that the plastic uh, insert. Uh, I call those the coils because those are copper coils. But everything was really, really nice and clean. The only thing that was really concerned me was this little thing here, and it was more discolored. It wasn't dirty, it was discolored. But I took a wire brush, you know, I, first I took a shop towel and then a wire brush to it, and uh, it still has whatever uh, blemish or uh, discoloration. It's, a, it's not rust, and it was nothing that came off, so I don't know if it's a manufacturer uh, uh, <laughs> sign or not. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plastic insert in and then get the, the coils inside the, the housing. I did clean the commutator, and I, I think you'll agree that it, it came out very, very well. It, it really is nice and shiny. And I did use electronic contact cleaner on, on that, but because it was minus 12 Celsius <laughs> outside, and uh, the stuff is too dangerous to, to use in the, in the apartment. But anyway, uh, and then I have the insulator, the, the spacer, we have that. Uh, that is the after I insert the motor in the machine, that's the, the, the mount to keep it locked in there. Here are the other parts, and likewise, they were equally, uh, you know, surprisingly quite clean. So, so I didn't have to do a lot of work to get them to, to look nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is get that insert. The first thing I'm going to do is put the plastic insert inside the aluminum housing here. We can see that the holes on the plastic insert, or the indents on the plastic insert, they line up with the, the holes for the screw and these alignment slots. They, they kind of go in there. And so it goes in like that. 
and there it is in there. So that's good. There's the insulator and there's the spacer. The spacer will go there. There's the indent, the cutout for the spacer and the insulator will go there. And this can go in there right now and it's also a matter of lining up the the holes for the screws, for the long screws. And I want to make sure that it goes into that plastic insert. So you know what, I'm going to put the plastic insert on this. You know what, I think that's how it goes. Like that. There's a there's a ledge there, right there. Let me put that insulator, that plastic insert in again. Okay, that's in nice. And now I know how this seats correctly. So that's good there. And the spacer, am I going to get the spacer in there? I would like to. I would really like to. There. That's there. And then the insulator will go up there. And that will go on there like that after I get that part put together. So I'll just set that over there for now beside the motor mount or motor lock and likewise this was quite clean as well the first thing that I have to do with this is, is I have to install the the bottom bearing and the bottom bearing spring and uh, so I need to get some grease and I need to get a Q-tip because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some grease in the on this bearing down in its, in its in its house, and that's what that slot is for, is to give room for air and grease, I guess. But that should go like that, and these tabs will have to go down under the. The inside tabs here, which are which are here, where are they? Where are the tabs? They're down there. Those aren't them. They're down there. There's one there, and there's one there, and this one's open on that side, and this one's open on that side, and so it has to go in and then swivel to lock. So let me get a, I've got my Q-tip. Let me get my mucky shock towel because I'm dealing with grease here. And I'm going to get some grease on the Q-tip. And I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to put a little grease inside the the orifice where the, the stud from the motor will go, where it'll rotate in there. So that's in there. And then I'm just going to put a little bit down in there as well. Now, I don't see any kind of like bottom felt or bottom cover and I thought that there should be one but anyway nonetheless let me get this lined up and the way to get it lined up is to put it in as accurately as possible so I've got it on my there and that's kind of accurate so the one has to go like that and then I've got the spring on, but I don't have that other tab in. So I'm trying to remember how I did it the last time I did it. And I'm hoping that it's a powerful spring. I must say that even for my 
thumbs. So I'm going to use my needle nosers. So I want to get that down there. And what I'm going to do is position it so that they're both right at the, the doorstep to go in. And then it'll be a matter of using the needle nose pliers to hold down one side or push down the one side while I hold the one side. So I'm going to try and hold that with my thumb while at the same time pushing that down. And I had it down last time but I didn't have the needle nose in a good enough position to to move it over. So it's in. There, that one's in. That one's in. Let me move this one over a little more. There. And now what I do is I line it up with uh, the stud on the motor. So I've got to get the, the wires through. So those go together. That one's in. And they line up correctly, like you can't really put those two in wrong. Except I am right now. <laughs> and then the second one goes in there. Uh-huh. I gotta move the light. It's getting darn hard to see. The easiest way to do this, I think, is to get these terminals in here for the brushes first, because they have to go the furthest distance. So I still have the spacer in there. So make sure that we don't, you know, we lose our spacers while we're finagling this around. And like I said, here I go with getting the wires in. You know, if I could get those two in, those two terminals in now, that would really get them out of the way, wouldn't it? They keep on trying to jump out. Then they have to be lined up so that they fit. But anyway, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna leave them right out for a minute. Straighten those out big time. All right, well, I don't know how much progress I'm making. Making a little. So I'm just gonna leave the camera on. Oh good, I'm glad I've been recording this. Finally, keep it on. Anyway, so I'm still figuring this out, practicing this out. It's awkward. If you've ever done this, you know that. So now I have to get those have to go through, that has to go through, and those have to go in their place. The spacer is in. Fair enough. So now I need the insulator. There. Now that insulator and spacer are in there. Those are through. I have to put that one on like that and that one in like that. I've got my forefinger on the left hand holding that mud, up, bit mud in there until this threads into it. So it's tight with the low torque fine screwdriver. I'll tighten these, snug them up just a tad later. So now we have the exciting part of getting these in. Right? Right. And then I have to put those together. Well that's cool. You know, I that was my practice run. I thought, well I better rehearse it before I record it. I thought, no, when you're rehearsing it, do it. Record it. When you get it in, you'll miss it. Anyway, my chair is collapsing. That one there is lined up. So now I gotta get a tube and a brush and a spring and get one of them in. And I gotta be careful and make sure that I have the same aspect on here going right on the commutator like that. I don't want it like that, so I've got the commutator 
being worn down by two sharp edges on each side and nothing in the middle. I want it the way it was, right? Right. And then the other thing is that I know that the tubes have to have the slot facing this side so that you can have the opportunity to look and see how short or long the, the brush life is, how, how much is left on the, on the brush. So, so that's the other thing. So I'm getting this tube and this spring and I'm putting it in knowing that, so it should go like that because there's the curve on the brush to march, match the curve on the commutator and here's the open part and it has to go down in there. So that is kind of a tricky part for me but if I get it started and I go real slow, well we can see that the brush and the spring is lined up nicely. And now I'm compressing it down onto the, is it in? It's in, I don't see it flying out. You know what, that top needs to be flattened because that's awfully close down there. So let me take that out again. See what I mean? See how, how that is? Right there? And so it's that much higher and that's why I couldn't see the the brush on the commutator. So I'm going to get a pair of pliers. Will those reach? No, so I'm going to have to get my bigger, my larger pliers. Okay, let me see if I can widen the jaws on this. It may be in wide enough there already. And all I want to do is just press that tab down, right? So there, it's together. Now, I'm going to see as I pull it off whether it stays together. And it seems to, no, it's starting to, well, it seems to have, let me just hold it there for a minute. And while I'm at it, I'm going to turn it 180 degrees and hold it there. I guess it's got that edge sticking out so it fits in there, so it locks in there. I guess that's the, the idea there. So, well, let me try that again and see, because I didn't like the way it was fitting. And again, that goes in there like that. There, we want it like, like that. So now all I have to do is hold that down. How are we doing? We've got the slot on this side. It seems to be seated up there. And now I can see more of the brush. I don't know if you can tell, but there is significantly more there. So I'm really pleased with that. So I'm going to put that cover on. And then we'll do the other one. And then we'll see if we can, once we've got it together, we'll install it. And then we'll see if we can put some electricity to it. But I mean, you know, we did the hand wheel. We did the hook gear. We did the throat plate positioning bracket. Sometimes the fine screwdrivers are just a little too dainty. There, I'm just snugging it up because I'm tightening into the nut that's already on the other side of this screw. And it's snug already. And we don't want to tear the nut apart inside, do we? So, now that I've finished that little speech, I'm going to get back to work and get this other brush in. So, there. That's good there, like that. Now I'll get me brush. Let me see if I want to, you know what? No, I don't think I need to tighten that. You know what? I want to put the spring in the right way. <laughs> Hard to mess that up. And I, want, and I want the slot to the outside. And there I am oriented correctly towards the... Wow, real life drama. Well, let's try that again. Okay, that's correct. This goes there like that. You know what? I'm going to straighten it out, bend it a little bit. 
It's in. I heard it click in. It's flush, it's flat. <laughs> that was a little bit of a challenge, man. You know? A real character builder. <laughs> There'll be no retakes, it'll just be cut out. <laughs> so we'll be able to put this in and fire it up. I gotta get a plug for it. I got a bunch of them. Come here, you 503J beauty queen, you. Oh, I love it that that still works. That goes like that. Up there like that. But anyway, that one goes on there. That one goes on there. Maybe that'll help anchor that there, and it does. And then we'll get the motor cover, and that helps anchor it also. Okay, that's true. That's good. Let me go up top. Let me go up top. Okay, we got a nice view right there. There's the texto light, the kind of reddish one. And this spindle here is the, the motor spindle. So motor, hand wheel. Tidy up here, get the lid back on and get a pedal and we'll give her some juice. Yabba dabba doo. Alrighty, there's a plug, that's what that looks like. And uh, here's the other, the other part of the plug. So, it's kind of awkward because it has to go in. Oh no, this one fits right. Good. So that's all I have to do there. Alrighty, let me plug that in and we'll see how we do with plugging it in. And I'm going to plug that one. So now I've plugged in the pedal. It's got electricity, it's got juice. And how do I know that it's not live? Like it's not making any noise. And there's no sparks. And I'm alive. So we're going to watch. Right? <laughs> you know what you guys? I'm thrilled. <laughs> this is a riot project, I'm telling you. But uh, anyway, you guys have a good day. It's like, what time is it now? It's Friday morning, Friday a.m. And it's Friday, March 1st. There we are, 4.17 in the morning. And I want you guys to have a great day. And... Uh, you know, the whole schmeal. Subscribe, uh, stay safe, have fun. And the next uh, video is going to be, well, I want to get sewing. So if I, I may end up sewing on this machine or the 401 that I had sewing across the, across the room on the other desk. So that's where I'll be going next. Eventually, I want to get back to the 340. I've got so many things on the list. I got the 348, I got the 201. I'm telling you. <laughs> but I'm really into this 401 and 500s, you know, the 400s and 500s right now. And uh, it's really 
it's really lifting my experience level up. But yeah, I mean, you know, at the beginning of the week or whenever it came in here last week or whatever, it was it, would, it couldn't even turn the hand wheel, and uh, now now it, it's kind of clean and uh, but it works. That's great that you folks were here. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope there was something good here for you, and uh, I look forward to the next video. It's going to be undoubtedly about uh, a 400 or 500 series machine again. But I want to thank you for being here. Have a great day. Have fun. Keep safe. Please do subscribe. It helps. And I look forward to, to you watching my next video. Adios, amigos.